Joining me today, I have Ron Pierce. He is the executive director of Empower Ministries. You're going to be speaking at Mission Fest Manitoba this year, Ron. We're so excited. Uh, but before we get into that, I would love to hear, tell me a little bit more about Empower Ministries for those who don't know. Well, Empower Ministries is a Canadian international missions organization that supplies national church planting movements all around the world with all the tools they need to grow. So 50% of what we supply is uh, scriptures. So we do about, uh, right now we're doing about 2 million a year, and these go into various countries. Um, uh, I can't name them all, but uh, some of the ones would be uh, in, in Southeast Asia, all those countries, China, India. Um, I'm just on my way down uh, in a couple of days into um, El Salvador, and they're having an outbreak of the Holy Spirit, shall we say, in the prisons of El Salvador, 50,000 prisoners. So they want me to come down and see that. So we follow these sorts of adventures, these rabbit holes, uh, all around the world. And then we report back. Now, Bibles is part, but we also do pastoral support. Church planters need help to get started, and they need a bicycle or a motorcycle, and they need help with evangelism, all that sort of stuff. So um, we go all around the world, find these hotspots, as I call them, the spiritual hotspots, and then we come alongside. Um, our goal is to lose our identity, Sylvia. What that means is that we want to lose our identity to them. We don't need to have a name. We just need to supply them with the tools because God is using them in such a powerful way. And so many people are coming to the Lord now around the world. All they need is a little assistance. So we hide in the bushes and um, come out and just help them. That's basically what we do. I love it. I just wrote an article recently about uh, the World Watch List just came out, you know, for 2023, and you've got now 11 countries in severe persecution for Christians. But I love right. hearing the um, hope as well that, yes, while there is severe persecution, there's lots of people coming to Christ in these places still as well. So... Great that well, you guys yeah. come alongside and them. We, we we work in China with about uh, 80 million believers in 30 of the largest house church networks. And they tell us that the persecution is sparking revival, people coming to the Lord. So in all these countries where we work, they have, like the Indies and where there's a lot of persecution in India right now, um, they have asked us over the years not to refer to them as the persecuted church, but the persevering church. And the idea is, is that, yes, we will receive persecution when we stand up for Christ, when we grow, when thousands and hundreds of thousands are turning to Christ, all the forces, political, religious, are going to come against us, and they know that's the price tag. So you've got to look at this a little differently from their perspective. They don't want to be um, held up or put up on a pedestal because of their persecution. They know it's coming. And therefore, they want Jesus to be glorified. So they want to be known as the persevering church. That's why we work in those areas. I love it. Thank you for, you know, giving me new wordage as well. I love that. Um, okay. Have you seen anything specifically? I know you're you're talking about sparking revival. Has there is there a story that comes to mind um, where you've seen God move or you've heard of God moving in these through your ministry and and whatnot? Oh. Uh, literally thousands of stories. Um, my problem when I come to a mission test is to try to pick out the best of the best because we're just deluged with them. Um, I just got back from Ethiopia. I met there with leaders. Um, uh, it, it, it's spreading widely, the gospel in the country, with so many coming to the Lord. And this one, uh, I'll probably tell this one mission test because it is so good, but here it's for you, for you right now. Um, they were going out, they were spreading the word um, a, a lot, uh, thousands of these evangelists that had come out of these historic religions. They go into these villages and um, they were winning all these people to the Lord so greatly. Now, they were only going to do it for two months. And so they go in for the two months. Then they were going to go home for a break and they'd see their families, you know, because it was night and day sort of thing. Well, when they got finished to the two month level, the people came. And as they said, they almost kidnapped us saying, don't go, don't go, because they were concerned that their friends and their relatives in the other villages that hadn't heard the gospel yet would die without Christ. 
and they would go to a Christless eternity. So they were in a panic. So here they are begging them on their knees and literally holding them back from leaving. So when the guy, uh, the, the missionary told me this story, and then I met them when I went in there just in November, um, they confirmed this. And uh, they, they said, yeah, they said it was a mini kidnapping, but it's okay. It was a Christian kidnapping. So it was fine. Um, but this is the sort of thing that Sylvia, we're seeing all the time. When the, when the lost come to know Jesus Christ, they know that this has saved them for eternity and they want everyone to know. So that means they go out there and they witness and they share the gospel. And when you get a professional, shall we say, evangelist coming in that knows all the truth, all the angles and everything like that, they want to keep them. And that's why they don't want to let them go. That That is one of the better stories right now. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. It is inspiring to hear what Empower Ministries is up to and and just really in collaboration with so many things that God is doing around the world. So yeah. Yeah. thank you so well, much for the. Oh, go ahead. Let, uh, can I just close with one thing? I know we're, we're on time, but you know how it says in the book of Joel, and it also says in Acts chapter two on the day of Pentecost, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That is happening now. And we are seeing it. We used to think that this was going to mean a stream or a creek or a small river. We just ran into Niagara Falls around the world. And this is coming in that level. So that's the sort of stories I'll tell at Mission Fest. This is something that will blow the people's minds. We're there. We're at a point, historic point in missions. Amazing. Okay, so if people want to hear you, when are you speaking at Manitoba Mission Fest? Uh, Saturday evening, uh, I'm the plenary there, and also on Sunday morning, two services at Church of the Rock, where Mission Fest will be held. Fantastic. So everybody come out. Thank you so much, Ron, for your time and your passion and your testimony. Can't wait to hear it. Amen. Thank you.